Hello everybody, I'm Ramses. And I'm the Vesper. And we're here to bring you another episode of Back in Time. Episode number 13. Where we take a look back at something from the past that you still enjoy to this day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and... Ring that bell! So we can bring you many more content like this in the future. Today, Vesper and myself are going to look back at PSAs. And if you're wondering what a PSA is, well, that's a public service announcement. All those wonderful messages they gave us back in the day tell us how not to kill ourselves or other people around us. We're going to look at the ones you saw as kids. We're going to look at the ones done by all sorts of companies. Get ready to learn a lesson. Now, I know a lot of these PSAs are going to fit to a lot of our audience watching this. So hopefully, if anything, by the end of this, you'll learn something and become a better person. Sit back, relax, laugh. Let us enjoy some memories from the past. For our first PSA, this is going to be one from the early 1980s. And this is going to be one I think people our age should really, really remember. But this one was on a lot and it has a very famous bunny spokesman. We're not going to give it any more away. Here it is. It's called Ounce of Prevention 1982. And here we go. A message from your Shriners Hospitals. You know, kids, the kitchen ain't a playground. There's a lot of danger hiding in here. That dangling cord can be a disaster. Especially if they grab hold and yank me. My cord should be up! <laughs> hey, you said it. Keep dangling cords out of reach. Delicious cookies can be a tempting treat. I should be over there. Keep goodies away from heat so kids don't get more than a treat. There's a lot of things in here that can burn you. Oh, By itself, it's harmless, but filled with scalding hot water... I just wait for a child to grab my handle, then. <laughs> Uh-oh, a really bad brain. So to stay out of hot water, keep those pot handles turned in. Well now, I hope that Bugs Bunny here was enough to tell you what you need to do to keep from killing yourself with things like percolators. Yes, percolators. They don't use these things anymore because even back then they were dangerous and didn't work right. Ah, I guess that's why they're warning all the kids to stay away from it. We got all sorts of things in the kitchen that are dangerous suddenly because some stupid kid is gonna destroy themselves by touching the cookies, touching the pot, and getting tangled in a plug to a percolator. Is that is that what I'm to understand here? Well, as you can see, back in the 80s, the plugs on those percolators turned into cobras. Oh, yeah, I know. Wow, that, that did look kind of dangerous. The worst one is the saucepan, who uh, becomes this evil, maniacal, deadly uh, pot who can't wait to hurt some unsuspecting kid if he touches it. Only after it's being boiled. But, you know, the biggest question should be is, why is Bugs Bunny doing it in your kitchen? I remember this one very well. They played it to death, and I don't know if it taught me anything, but I do think it's very memorable. I remember the evil pot, and I remember the snake, I remember Bugs Bunny. Oh, great stuff. Let us know what you thought of this. This is a classic, and we're only just getting started. But... As you know, already is I'm back in time. We gotta move on to the next one. So this is gonna be a very famous character. Time for timer, everybody. Yes, we are going there. That yellow blobish thing that looks like a peanut with a cowboy hat. Yes, we are going with timer. Every morning on ABC during the 70s and 80s, you would see this guy teaching you some valuable lesson. Which one did we pick? This is probably the most famous of all of them, and I think you guys will recognize it right away. A PSA from the 70s that was shown well into the 80s. Bang, bang, bang! <laughs> Time for timer. Do you ever get that hungry feeling after school? Boy, I do. I'm so hungry, I could eat a wagon wheel. When I'm slow on the draw and I need something to chaw, I hanker for a hunk of cheese. When my ten gallon hats are feeling five gallons flat, I got something planned, which is little cheese sandwiches. Come on. Here's a great little snack to tide you over till dinner. If you want something delicious and nutritious, cheese is a super snack. Look, a wagon wheel. When my get up and go has got up and went, I hanker for a hunk of cheese. When I'm dancing, I hold down and my boots kind of slow down. Or any time I'm weak in the knees. I hanker for a hunk of, a slaver slice a chunk of, a snacker that is a winner, and yet won't spoil my dinner. I hanker for a hunk of cheese. Yahoo! 
All I gotta say is, I still don't know what the heck he is, and I don't know where he's getting his music from here, and why he's so obsessed about wagon wheels. I don't know, that is a good question. I have always been disturbed by what is this thing supposed to be? Is he a peanut? Is he a banana that cut, cut wrong? Is he a pear that went bad? I don't know, but this is another one of those that anyone that grew up in the 70s and 80s will definitely know who this character is. It's the ABC Network in between cartoons, and he would try to teach you a lesson. After watching this, we understand Timer is just not all there. He's talking about wagon wheels wheels hitting the actual real thing they said well you can make your own with crackers and cheese i'm like no that's not a wagon wheel <laughs> he doesn't even talk about these wagon wheels again because he's riding on a horse and avoiding the subject altogether yeah timer has magic powers they don't really explain it wait ramsey's look he shrunk in this one. Oh yeah now he's in the counter of the kitchen and the funny thing is is cheese really a healthy snack that's that's something that sort of has to be questioned too because i think since the 80s we've learned that's not the best snack but in the 70s and 80s they were always pushing cheese as a healthy alternative to everything else. Well, that's why our audience is here to watch us because we deliver the cheese. Now we're going to go with a real serious PSA. This is a character who really, really was trying to push a very important message. They did many, many commercials with this character and you're going to know him right away from 1986. And yeah, here we go. I'm Woodsy Owl and I'm here to tell you about a dirty word, pollution. Help Woodsy spread the word. Never be a dirty bird. Woohoo! Don't paint or write off buildings. That's pollution. Give a hoot. Don't pollute. Never be a dirty bird. Woo hoo. Turn your radio down. That's noise pollution. In the city or in the woods, top keep America looking good. Well, Vesper, anyone that's anyone knows that was Sterling Holloway, the voice of both Winnie the Pooh and Woodsy the Owl throughout the 70s and 80s. Very iconic voice actor. And not only that, but if you don't listen to Woodsy, he's going to come after you with his army of kids on bikes telling you not to do graffiti because that's pollution and not to turn up your radio too loud because that's noise that's pollution. That's right, noise pollution. The most important pollution of all to stop. Thank goodness we have Woodsy to tell us to turn down your radios because that is noise pollution. And I guess Woodsy represents every single type of pollution. And noise pollution is a pollution, even though I don't think it's important enough to teach us that in the commercial, but... Here you go, he's telling you to turn a radio down and he's gonna send an army of kids on bikes if you keep those radios blasting too loud. And the other thing we also learned is that Woodsy's too cheap to buy a bike for himself. But we digress, yes, this is a very important public service announcement. Give a hoot, don't pollute, very catchy song. Best we gets annoyed whenever I sing it, help Woodsy spread the word. Never no, I don't a... get angry, I get even. Get even? What do you mean? I, wait, wait, I... There we go. I just reminded Ramses of uh, why he's not allowed to sing on the show. But don't worry. Things are taken care of. He's uh, now getting some ice. And uh, we'll go ahead and start the next PSA, which is the Ninja Turtles giving tips about the most dangerous drug ever. What is that drug you say? Why, it's marijuana. Hey, Joey. I got some stuff you just gotta try. What is it? Pot. You know, marijuana. Oh, well, I don't know. What are you, chicken? Joey's in a jam. What should he do? Uh, Kate. Get a teacher. Excellent. Get a pizza. Get real. Get out of there. You got it. Let's see if Joey's that smart. I'm not a chicken. You're a turkey. He's right. Drug dealers are dorks. Don't even talk to them. Cowabunga! Yep, that's just exactly how I remember the 90s. The <laughs> drug dealers coming up to you in the middle of the hallway that is clearly monitored by teachers and going, Hey, I got three doobies. You want one? The funniest part of that is Michelangelo's advice is, by the way, to get a pizza. By the way, Ramses, remember, Mikey Special. That's right, that's right. Don't forget, we learned that in our TMNT playthrough. The kid didn't seem afraid at all of him, which is the funny thing, because that's not realistic either. You'd be like, uh-oh, what do I do now? How do I get out of this? And for those of you who aren't familiar, when you called someone a chicken, that was like with such vim and vigor that you just couldn't withstand doing something because of it. I mean, look at Marty McFly. He understood how bad it was to call somebody a chicken. What's the matter? Where are you going? Are you chicken? That's it, isn't it? Nothing but a little chicken. I can't believe he did it, but the kid called him. Oh boy, I'm still upset about this. I know, I mean, just think about it. He called he, him a... A turkey, which is like chicken times four. Uh, standing there in shock, he's like, he, he just called me a turkey. You just don't say 
turkey in the public space it is not allowed. I mean, wow. I mean, I can't believe they're actually putting this in a PSA. It didn't matter if you were watching cartoons. It didn't matter if you were watching a kid's show. It didn't matter if you were just sitting on your couch randomly. This PSA would show up. You say, oh, the Ninja Turtles. And then you remember Mikey acting like a doofus. You remember the turkey line. And you remember the shock look on the drug dealer when the kid walks away. It is implanted in your mind. I said, you know something? I am never going to use drugs. For the parish of the thought that I'd be called turkey. You know, they always show drug dealers as basically being gaunt, haunted, evil people. This kid looks like a typical 80s kid. Doesn't he look like Joey Lawrence from that uh, Give Me a Break? And from Blossom, that kid? Whoa! That's another story for another day. We gotta move on to the next one. 1990s PSA, clean your teeth. Very important. And we're gonna really learn that appetite is very important in this commercial, and you'll see why. And no one has bigger teeth than dinosaurs, so they're the right ones to do it. Here we go. Yes, Dudley? I'm starving. Can we have a snack, Mom? Here's your snack, kids. Cheese, fruits, and I chopped up some carrot sticks. Thanks. What? No candy? No chewy gooey tar bars? Eating too many snacks can cause tooth decay. But if you need a snack between meals, choose nutritious foods like fruits, vegetables, or cheese. I'm proud of these 242 teeth. That's why I'm eating nutritious food. That's right. Eat up, kids. Yay! Wow! I have so many questions about this PSA. Namely, are they living in bedrock to begin with? It looks like it. That's what I thought when I saw it. And the next question that comes to my mind is, why is he wearing a baseball cap? It looks like the real history was dinosaurs invented baseball. There you go. Yeah, I know. I mean, just observing this PSA is just blowing my mind. Namely, the fact that it looks like they lured this saber-toothed tiger or... No, that looks like a squirrel. Well, either way, or he's... a beaver? I don't know. They're luring him, obviously, here to eat him because, as far as I I know the Tyrannosaurus Rex is like to eat meat, not cheese. If you're looking at this in a skeptical view, which we do here in Vestal Retro Reviews, these two T-Rexes are up to no good. They're very obviously luring the mammal into them and they're telling him, yes, eat some fruit, eat some cheese, yes. Yeah, we're not fattening you up to use these beautiful teeth that we show non-stop throughout the PSA. I want candy, but candy causes tooth decay, so you need to obviously eat these sweet apples, which do cause tooth decay. Exactly, but they don't show you when they fade the credits is this poor guy is gonna be the real meal. They're gonna put it on the plate with all the vegetables. This poor guy was never seen again, but they did keep their teeth clean because you know what does make a healthy teeth for carnivore? He's eating a lot and cleaning everything off, so I think this did help their teeth. So you see, you can learn a lot from a PSA. PSA. Wow, this is great. This PSA is about how you should eat and that you shouldn't eat sugary foods and you should keep to the essentials. In this case, unwanted friends. That's right. And he was never seen again. But with that happy note, let's move on to the next one. Is there anything from the 2000s, Miss? Oh, of course there is. And this is right up my alley. And you're going to love it. This is a Will Rogers Institute PSA. And don't worry, Will Rogers here is not advocating for the eating of your friends. Oh, thank goodness. I've had enough of that. And with all the cheese and everything going on all these PSAs, please. Will Rogers 2000 PSA. Let's have it. Well, we saved the world from aliens, but Bobby is still 50 feet tall and Dale is still invisible. It's true. I have no choice. Shabu, for my last wish, I want everything back to normal. It is done. Wait a minute. This isn't back to normal. This is light beer. Darn you, Shabu! You were right, Hank. King of the Hill, the movie, was a terrible idea. As bad as it was, I don't know why you had to cast Ned Beatty as me. We went a different way, Bill. I just wish that some good could come out of this tragedy. Well, it did, Peggy. We all got Will Rogers combo packs to enjoy while we watched this abomination. At the concession stand, be sure to ask for the Will Rogers summer combo pack because a portion of the proceeds will go directly to the Will Rogers Institute to develop new treatments and cures for a variety of pulmonary diseases and support national educational programs. So please, buy a combo pack and help us fight lung disease, one junior mint at a time. Wow, 
Wow, Master, you really found an uh, interesting one here. Oh, that's right. This thing played in movie theaters everywhere. It was a great PSA, and I will fully and honestly admit that I wasn't exactly the biggest fan of King of the Hill, but you know what? It was still fun to watch from time to time, but uh, yeah, I think that even the creators realized that if you made a King of the Hill movie, it would be an unholy abomination. Yes, I think that was the joke here, but I can't help but to wonder what this movie was about. We were only given like a minute worth of the movie, so it had to do with a genie, obviously. Shabu. You get three wishes in the standard genie to master relationship. And we had a giant Bobby and an invisible Dale. So that's two wishes, but then we also had aliens. So one of the wishes might've been superpowers given to some of them. One was size and the other was invisibility. And another was, I wish we could see aliens or something. And that was the second wish, right? But Ramses, you're overthinking this. The true plot of this unholy abomination of the movie was to raise money for the Will Rogers Institute by buying a summer combo pack. You know, it's my least favorite candy, by the way. Junior Mints. Out of all the candies to pick, Junior Mints? I mean, come on. Well, you know what? There's still popcorn and soda, so that counts. Oh, well, at least it's a good Although, time. we have to be careful because dinosaurs might randomly show up to eat us. That doesn't matter. What matters is, is that this is for a good cause and that if you're going to watch a terrible, horrible, nasty, no good movie, you need a Will Rogers combo pack so you can help save the kids after you're gone because this most likely will make your eyes melt out of your head and you will die of shock. All right, Vester, I want you to behave yourself now. This is a very serious message that we're about to listen to from Pee Wee Herman. I know we're big fans. I know he's comedian and funny, but let's try to keep this. This is a very important subject. That's right? right. It's not like we reviewed his movie or something. Vester, let's go play it. Pee Wee Herman talking about drugs. Here we go. This is crack, rock cocaine. It isn't glamorous or cool or kid stuff. It's the most addictive kind of cocaine and it can kill you. What's really bad is nobody knows how much it takes. So every time you use it, you risk dying. It isn't worth it. Look, everybody wants to be cool, but doing it with crack isn't just wrong could be dead wrong. Best friend, that was a very serious message. I know Pee Wee Herman is a ha 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 funny, but I don't want to hear any jokes here. This, this was a very important message, and the crack cocaine epidemic was really bad at that time. I think it's very important. We should definitely tell our viewers about the subject, and because to this day, that is still a very dangerous drug, right? Yes, it is, but you know what? This is a public service announcement. This is the most hilarious thing I've ever seen what, in what? a long time. It's freaking Pee Wee Herman talking about crack cocaine, and in that voice, and that serious look at him holding it up there, Vesper, it's not, no, no, it's not a laughing matter, Vesper. He it's a very laughing matter because I know for a fact that probably after this PSA was done, he picked up that vial, he went to a certain theater, and... Vesper, you know, hey, stop. It must you go there, Vesper. This is a serious message. I, I don't want... No, Vesper... The thrill can kill? Oh, no. He was after a totally different thrill. I'm sorry, folks. I, I do deeply apologize. Vesper is the head of our program here, and I'm very sorry. I am ashamed and shocked by his behavior. I really am. This is very surprising. No, wait, wait. It, even it says right there, don't you dare try it. Pee-wee's going to do it for us. I did not know he was going to do this, all right? It's a very serious... What are you talking there, about, right? Ramses? You were rolling on the ground laughing your butt off as soon as he held up that little vial and started talking. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm like, what the best one? No, it's not me laughing. What, what are you? I mean, come on now. <laughs> if somebody walked up to you wearing a suit, a red bow tie, and looked like a petulant man child and talked in that voice, would you take him serious he's about doing, crack cocaine? He's doing it in character. That's why he has Paul Rubens. He's, he's doing it as Pee Wee Herman. Are they really. <laughs> Uh, let's just move on. Don't do drugs, folks, or you might wind up like Pee Wee Herman. I guess that's the lesson to get from all this. Now we're gonna move on to something animated, and we're gonna have some of the most famous, iconic anime characters. We already showed you the turtles. It doesn't get much bigger than that. Well, yes, it does. We have some kids that are even more famous than the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the animated world, and they are, that's right, Charlie Brown and the Peanuts Gang. And they're gonna tell us a very, very important message 
About playing baseball? No, that's not what- Oh, let's find out what the message is here. PSA from the 90s for the Lug Association. Peanuts. Here it is. Good grief! Two runs scored! Now we're behind again! I quit! <coughs> I can't see a thing! There's too much pollution out there! I quit too, Charlie Brown. It's no fun out there in all this smog. losing games because of pollution. Don't let pollution ruin your game or your lungs. If you're all wondering where air pollution come from, it's obviously Charlie Brown. Yeah, I guess Charlie Brown has such a dark stigma over him that he's causing pollution. But you know what? I think we can go a step further because you heard that the other team is able to run and get around the bases and score. I think what problem with Charlie Brown's team is the fact they must be smoking or vaping off on the side and nobody can see that. And they're just blaming Charlie Brown for all the air pollution. Lucy was hacking up a lung and blaming Charlie Brown. But Lucy always does that. So I think they're blaming their own smoking habit on Charlie Brown. Because we're losing 12 to nothing and I'm blaming the smog on it suddenly. That all makes sense. This is basically a PSA about not being a sore loser. I mean, this is just proof positive that everybody is out to get Charlie Brown. You know what? I bet after everybody walks off, he stays there and gets no hitter for the rest of the game. Probably, yes. It's using old footage, by the way, from a previous cartoon from and they're entering new lines to fit the situation but what do they expect kids to do is what i'm wondering kids don't drive kids don't buy gas and then burn things what are kids supposed to do to stop pollution i i'm not understanding obviously it's to blame charlie brown for all their problems and to walk off the baseball field. i guess so so now i want to take you to that special video at the end of it. so for those of you out there who don't know about this egg that helps turn you away from drugs we're about right. to show you all right an egg and drugs i'm not 100 sure what he's talking about well i guess we're going to tune in and find out eggs and drugs that's the only clue we'll give you here on the mystery psa and here we go is there anyone out there who still isn't clear about what doing drugs does okay last time This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Oh, yes, of course. That's right. I should have known. Yes, one of the most iconic anti-drug PSAs ever made in the history of the 1980s. This was shown thousands of thousands of times. Everybody in the world has seen this one. And you know what? I actually do believe that of all of our PSAs, this was probably the most effective one because it was so short. And if you talk to anybody from the 80s that watched TV whatsoever, they know what this PSA is. Yes, don't do drugs, otherwise you're frying your brain. That's pretty much what it's saying. How hot is this daggone pan? Look, as soon as the egg is dropped in there, it not only turns white, it turns brown. To tell you a little bit about the signs of it, you notice there's a reason they're showing the butter scorching like that, because if they hadn't, that egg would have instantly hit and stuck to it and wouldn't do anything that your seed is doing now. Yeah, I'll bet you they could never use this pan again, that's for sure. Now, they say, do you have any questions? It's like, yes, I do have a few questions. Why are you dropping your egg in the pan? What's the purpose of this? You're not explaining what's going on. I feel they didn't answer enough of our questions in this advertisement. All I know is, is that this is what I consider PSAs of all PSAs. Yes, this is a very, very, very effective PSA. PSAs were supposed to give you the simplest and most effective a message in the quickest statement. They became something much more. This was what they were supposed to be. This spot saying, don't do drugs. That's all it is. And you're like, oh, if I do drugs, my brain's going to be scrambled. That's, that's it. It's as simple as that. And somehow some of the PSAs we showed you overcomplicated it. But this one, it was just serious enough and quick enough. Yeah, I agree. And with that all said, that's it for this episode of Back in Time. So I hope you guys all enjoyed a look back in time at these PSAs. Lots of fun. With that all said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and... Don't do drugs. That's right. Wait a minute, Mr. that's not right. If it's supposed to be... 